It is wonderful that I think the last, the final question, at least to, to this point, it was about, you know, what would the Torah say? And tonight is about um, medicine and uh, AI. It's not just about AI, but it's really about medicine and AI, the, the, the uh, title of your book. And I think one of the things that m a lot of us are ch challenged with is the sort of the deeper philosophical or maybe even theological questions about where this is going. I, sitting here tonight, I was thinking about like, you know, like the Manhattan Project, you know, and then the bomb came out and then everybody looked back and said, oh my God, what did we do? And I think we're almost living through this kind of decade of like, we're creating the big monster and, you know, where is it going to end? And I think those, th that ambivalence was an ambivalence a lot of the scientists had, right? Um, I haven't seen the m movie Oppenheimer, but I've read enough about it to know that there was a, there a lot of, about the project that even during the development of the bomb, right, people were thinking about where it would go. And then the counter argument to it is that the, we have world peace because now we're at a standoff and there could never be world destruction because it would happen so quickly and so rapidly and so dramatically. So I don't mean to compare it, but sitting here tonight, I feel like we're almost in the lab. We're in, um, in New Mexico. What was it called? Uh, Los Alamos, you know, and like everybody's sitting and saying, should we go to work tomorrow? Yeah, so, so what do you do, right? And that's the, I think it's the question you're asking. Like, like we're, you know, where do we go with this? Because we're, we're just getting started, you know? So I, I thought about that today, and, um, and I asked uh, Carrie what, what your, your Hebrew name was. And I wanted to make this a little, just a little bit personal to end off on a personal note. And you said your Hebrew name was Chana. And then I said to Zach uh, on an email yesterday, I said, what's, what's your Hebrew name? And you said Yitzchak Shmuel. And I thought about Yitzchak. Uh, first, and then we'll get to Hannah and Shmuel. I thought about Yitzchak, uh, Isaac, who is the second, the second patriarch in the, in, the, in the Bible. He's the son of Abraham. And his, his, name, his name literally is, is translated as joy or rejoicing or laughter. Um, and Kibi Yitzchak, Yikar Lechazar, and God tells Abraham, you're, you know, your descendants will, will carry through Isaac, Yitzchak. And why was he called laughter and, and joy? For many reasons, but the, the reason the Bible actually tells us is uh, because Sarah was 90 years old when God told, um, a, she was 89, when God told, um, she was 90 years old when she, when she bore, when she, get, had, when she gave birth to Yitzchak. And it's a very interesting story, Yitzchak. And this, I just want to address this to you, but uh, with it, I hope, I think we'll get some insight. I'm going back a little bit uh, before Maimonides, um, but I'm going to just read something here. So three angels show up at Abraham's house, if you read the Bible, the Torah, and t uh, three angels come to tell Abraham three things, and one of the three things is that you are going to have a son. And now Abraham is uh, 99 years old, and uh, Sarah's 80, uh, uh, 89 years old, and they don't think they can have children. I mean, they're, medically, they, could, they probably couldn't have kids. Um, so that's where the medicine part comes. And so, so the angel turns to Abraham, and, and she says, where's Sarah? Where's, where's the wife? You know, he comes into the house. Uh, because we're going to come back here in a year, okay? And Sarah, your son, your wife is going to have uh, a son. Sarah is listening at the other uh, behind the wall to these three angels, but they're men. They look like men. So, so this is very important to hold. In Yiddish, we say halt cup, concentrate. So there's there's this guy telling telling her husband, who's uh, 99 years old, that um, I'm going to be back in a year and your wife is going to have a child. And Vavram Basara Skenim by but they were elderly. They, you know, they couldn't have children at, at their age. Vatitzchak Sarah, so Sarah laughs. Bekirba internally, she ridicules, she mocks in her mind this guy telling her husband that she's going to have a kid. You know, she's in the fertility clinic. You know, she's not 35. She's, you know, she's, she, they're talking to her husband, and he's 99 years old. So she laughs. Could I, at this age, have a child? So God turns to Abraham and he says, Why, why was your wife ridiculing the notion that she could have a child? And to say, because she's elderly? Is there some, anything that is impossible to the Lord? I'll be back in a year, and there'll be a baby. So, so Sarah's getting reprimanded for laughing, for doubting that it can actually happen. So Sarah realized she's being reprimanded for doubting the ability to have a child at that age, and she says, I didn't laugh. 
I didn't mock. I didn't ridicule. I didn't doubt the Lord. Kiyara, Kiyareya, because she was afraid. She didn't want to, you know, she didn't want to, she didn't, she didn't want to, um, she didn't want to lose the opportunity. She, you know, she, she was afraid if I say, if, if, I, if I admit that I laughed, maybe I won't have a kid, you know, maybe. But she was afraid. And Abraham says, no, you laughed. You laughed. You laughed inside. That's the Bible. She has the baby. The baby's born. Yitzchak comes into the world. And there's a huge celebration that Abraham and Sarah at this old age have a child. And Yitzchak becomes the second, of the second patriarch of the Jewish people. And then he has Jacob. Jacob has the 12 tribes. Nachmanides, not Maimonides, who's also a medieval Jewish philosopher and scholar, asks a very interesting question on this verse. And he says, why did Sarah laugh? Why did she mock? <laughs> Thank you. What do you do? I, I'm a Sally McKnight, a primary care internist. Here we go, doctor. She's sensible, right? There's no way she was having a kid at that age. She was in the same house as Abraham, and the angels came and told her she was going to have a baby. Why did, she, why did she doubt the Lord? Why did she doubt God? So Nachmanides says, maybe she didn't realize they were angels. Because the story in the Bible is that three men appeared in Abraham's house, but we traditionally read it that they were angels disguised as men. So because they were disguised as men, she thought three guys, nomads, walking through the desert, showed up in the house. She doesn't know that they're angels. Abraham maybe was at a different level. He was interacting with them. He sensed something. He knew something divine was going on. So he took it seriously. These are messengers from God, disguised as men. Sarah, Nachmanides says, maybe Sarah didn't realize that they were angels disguised as men that were coming to give her, give her a message. And so she said, three lunatics showed up at my house and told me I'm having a kid. So she laughs. Oh, makes sense, right? Well, I have a question for you. Nachmanides is very smart. He says, really? If that's the case, why was Abraham so upset that she, that she left? She didn't know they were angels. They, they were just humans. So why, why did he critique her for mocking? Because he knew they were angels and had a better sense of but, he, but, if, but if he knew they were angels, he knew that Sarah may not have known that they were angels. So Sarah didn't know. If Sarah didn't know, why are you mocking Sarah for critiquing? She thought three guys showed up in the house. Back to theory of uh, no, Sonra, it's all about AI. It's all about other. Here's the answer. Here's the answer that Nachmanides gives. Forget your chat GBG. You can, because you're not going to find this on the phone. No, 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 I love it. He says, he says something so powerful, and this is what tonight's about. He says, even if there were three, just three guys that walked into the house and said you could have a baby, she should have believed it. You don't need to hear it from an angel. If you believe in that something great can happen, if you believe that God can give you a child at that age, do I need the priest to tell me? Do I need the rabbi to tell me? Do I need the doctor to tell me? No. All I need to hear is the words that the things you think are impossible are possible. All I need to hear is the message from wherever it comes that the things you think you can achieve, you can achieve. And that magic can actually happen. And that at the age of 99 and at the age of 89 years old, you can have a child. And that's why Abraham turns to Sarah and he says, Does, why would you ever doubt that something that is unachievable is achievable? How could you doubt? You're sorry, you're the mother of the Jewish people. Everything is achievable. The impossible is achievable. And if the impossible is achievable, then it doesn't matter if it's a nomad in the desert or the greatest doctor or the greatest rabbi or your phone. Where does it come from? It comes from a higher place, and it comes from a greater place. And the universe is infinite, and the human mind is infinite. And God gave us the capacity to explore the universe and to, deep, to delve deeply into the universe and to answer all the questions that we have. And then Yitzchak will be born. Then the second generation could come along. If we don't believe that, there won't be another generation. And that's why Avram turned to Sarah, and he said, No, Sarah, you laughed. He critiqued it because even if for you they were just human beings, you need to know that it can be done. And Yitzchak is born, and that's your name. Your second name is Shmuel. 
and your name is Chana. The second place in the Torah that we read about this impossible defeat of having a child, excuse me? Yeah. yeah, amazing. It's amazing. It's a, I, I it was the Ramban. I looked at the Ramban today. Uh, today, I said to Toby, I said I got to look at this. Part. I knew Yitzchak, and I looked at the Ramban and I said, Wow, the Ramban is what a genius! That he said, Ah, oh, Sarah, Sarah, who cares if they're an angel? Who cares who they are? You can do it. You can do it. Oh, but I'm about Samuel and oh Sarah and Shmuel. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're talking about that. Wait. So the second, the second place that we see this impossible notion of medicine. And, 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 and I don't want to say artificial intelligence, but other forms of intelligence is, is with Ischana. I'm sorry, not Ischana is your name. Yeah. Chana is the mother of Samuel. So you carry the name Chana. And Samuel is the prophet. <laughs> He's the prophet who appoints King, King Saul. He's the Shmuel Hanavi. The book of Samuel 1, this book of Samuel 2. Chana is barren. She also can't have a child. And by the way, on Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, we read both the story of Hannah praying to God for a child and Sarah praying for, for a child. Hannah comes to, sh- to, the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the Mishkan, to the tabernacle, and she prays for a child. She comes to the tabernacle, she comes to the high priest, Eli Akayin. And you, if you read the book of, cha- the first opening chapter of, of the book of Samuel, she's standing and she's praying. The high priest sees that she's praying, but she's chatting. She's saying the words. She's not speaking out loud. And she's not speaking out loud. You're not, she's not speaking out loud. Her lips are moving. I, I didn't want to read the whole uh, Old Testament tonight, but I'll just spare you guys the time. I, but she's, her lips are moving, Silent. but silently. And, but the voice is not heard. So he thinks she's drunk. So he thinks she's drunk. How can your lips move and you say nothing? Good question, right? We talk about technology. How can your lips move and you say nothing? We have people that talk for two hours and they say nothing, but for your lips to move at the same... So her lips are moving and, she, and, she, and, she, and, she, and, she, and it looks... So, she, so the high priest thinks that she's drunk. Well, drunks don't come to the temple. You don't come into the synagogue when you're drunk. You don't come to the temple when you're drunk. So Eli, the high priest, comes to Sarah, to Hana, to Hana, and he says to Hana, uh, you know, basically, um, same thing. Like, you know, the, the, you gotta, this is... Uh, what's, what's wrong? Why are you drunk? Uh, you know, this is not a place to be drunk. And Hannah says, I'm, I'm in such pain. I have such, such pain in my, in my heart and my soul. I want a child. So I came to God to beg, to beg for a child. And Ailey sees the distress of this woman who can't have a baby. And uh, Ailey promises her that she's going to have a child. And she's going to come back in a year. She makes a vow to God that when the child Shmuel is born. She's gonna tur- uh, he's going to be a Nazareth, and he's going to de- dedicate his entire life. She dedicates his entire life to the Jewish people and to leadership and to God and to the world. He ultimately becomes Shmuel Hanavi. This idea that sometimes we see things that seem one way. Drunkenness is not the normal way. You know, people drive drunk like this, and people who are drunk can't think straight. So the world often appears to us Awkward or weird or distorted or manipulated. And you look at the algorithm and you say, something's wrong. And Ailey, the high priest, says, no, nothing's wrong. There's something deeper going on. You may not understand what's going on. Look a little deeper. She's not drunk. She's begging God for a child. And the only way she was able to, she couldn't even, she couldn't even say the words. Imagine that pain when somebody cries and there's no tears. And there's no sound because the pain is so, so, so hard. We should, if, for, if any of us know women who want to have children and can't, that, that pain, that the worst pain in the, in, 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 ever of not being able to bear a child. Have people spend years and years and everything they have, all of their resources to bring a child into the world. So it appears drunk, and it's a misconception. It's, it's a misconception because we are not perceiving it properly. And Ailey the kind, only someone that's real, real smart, Eli's the high priest. So he has an insight into the universe. He's living in a meta world. He says, ah. He, 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 he rechecks back into the higher form of reality. And he says, oh, she's not drunk. Something deeper is happening here. The words, the words are coming out. Maybe I, don't, I didn't understand the words that were coming out. So I have to understand what's going on in the heart. Shmuel and Avi is born. And these two stories... Hannah, who prays for that child, Shmuel, 
and Yitzchak, who is brought into the world by their great mothers in these two forms of essentially connecting to something greater and something deeper. And I think my own humble perspective, being in the helm of two doctors and among some of the greatest medical minds in the city here, maybe in the, in the country, I think that, that is I, uh, the conviction, I believe, humbly, I'm only a rabbi, is that we have to have with this, with, this, uh, with this amazing thing that's going on in the universe. We don't fully understand it yet, and there are problems, and it's not perfect. But if the purpose of this is to make the world a better place and to perfect the world, especially with medicine, this is the great achievement of your book, um, you know, we've been talking among the Shoptai uh, graduate student community about doing AI. Do, we should have an event on it. People ask us, what type of events do you do? And I said, we do a lot of different things. And they said, we should do AI, we should do AI. And it was such divine providence, in my opinion, that, that Jim emailed me about you because I said, if we're going to do AI, let's start with medicine because that's really the place where everybody, we, who doesn't agree, right, um, that if we can make medicine better, we can help. And that's the, that's the story of the Bible, that there's another form of intelligence here and almost... Uh, an aspiration to grasp onto things in the in the biblical sense. It's a it's a transcendental, maybe godly experience, uh, an infinite God, a creator who ultimately decides who has and when we have our children or don't have our children. But that same God is the God who says that we have to open our minds scientifically, explore the universe, and rip it open until we can bring health. And the we get to a world where a ninety year old woman. We're I mean, scientists are talking about it today, right? The, the lifespans are going to grow, and we're going to live longer. And today, if I told you of a 90-year-old woman, you'd laugh, right? Yeah, Sarah laughed. <laughs> you know what? We'll come back in 100 years, and we'll have, uh, I don't know what will be happening. L'chaim, thank you. It's wonderful. Yeah.